So maybe you have noticed recent discussion about global environmental problems. Yes, some, some did. Uh, I would like to welcome here local guys from Project Parallel Garden who will bring a little bit different answer to questions raised by uh, environmental movements who mostly address their uh, requests to governments and big corporations. But Pearl Garden will try to show a little bit different approach to uh, environmental challenges, which uh, was built on Pearl Police values and um, principles which uh, don't uh, rely on uh, central, uh, central authorities or uh, big entities and try to solve global problems, but uh, focus on what we can do now and here. Pearl Garden is also very, I would say, like flagship project uh, of uh, Pearl Polis program because uh, they do great lectures, uh, regular Enviro meetups, but they also do um, lots of physical stuff. They build hydroponias, uh, farm bots, and they develop uh, with a very straight forward uh, vision of, um, of some development they are going to introduce you in uh, today's lecture. So I would like to uh, welcome on stage Radim Kozup. <laughs> Radim Kozup is uh, is member of board, uh, let's say, of, of our uh, legal association uh, that is interface to the state. Uh, Parapolis has interface to the state to be able to uh, pay uh, rent and these things. So uh, uh, Radim, as co-founder of Blockchain Legal uh, and, and professional attorney, uh, covers the legal issues. Uh, then I would like to uh, welcome Michal Zatřepálek, who uh, <laughs> comes to the stage with us. Guy with background in mining tries to implement his uh, experiences from mining in environmental uh, problems and solutions. And the last one is Jakub Hamata. <laughs> and Jakub is kind of a science geek who is um, a professional in landscape creating, gardening, uh, and biology uh, in wide sense of its word. So, guys, I pass the mic and please. Thank you very much for introduction and good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming for our presentation tonight. I guess the reason you're here is you are somehow interested in environmental topics. You prob probably think how could someone think he can change such complex and global topics from scratch. And maybe you're also interested like how Parallel Garden Project is connected to Parallel Nipolis and what exactly is it. Tonight, we would like to share our story with you, simply. And the reason why we are doing that is uh, we would like to give you a cookbook. The cookbook, how to start a parallel project, maybe parallel startup. So we would like to explain what is it, a parallel project, actually, and what was our path until today, and um, what are the principles, what are the specific installations and steps we did. So let me start with the maybe a little bit of theory and theoretical part and we'll get more and more specific to the towards end. Big problem issue. This was in the beginning of our project. Probably all of you have something like a big problem, something you feel it's a big problem. Let's say global one. For us, the big problem was um, unsustainable approach to agriculture, wasting of natural resources, but uh, also one specific issue we had. And this was a very unsophisticated way of mining cryptocurrencies, especially uh, when not using the huge amount of residual heat 
that is coming out from the mining. So we were looking uh, for the solution, how to deal with that, and like, what can we do, actually? For big problems, what is um, similar and what is uh, common for them is definitely they're mostly global. They cause some mass harm, or at least the threat of it. And they usually um, breach your fundamental values you have. Uh, also, they usually need a big solution. So, for example, if the truck hits your house, so it's broken, it's destroyed, you have to repair it, you have to contact insurance company, and so on. If the hurricane hits Haiti, for example, or Florida, it's a completely different story. It's a completely different solution you need to take. But this example has one advantage, because if you have something like a catastrophe, you already know what the results are, you already know what happened. So you're looking for a solution on something, then you, you know what is it. Like You have to solve the existing problems. The problem of most of big global problems is that um, we're actually not so certain of them. There is usually some, ex some social consensus to a certain extent, but on the other hand, uh, not all of them is like the global one, not for all of them uh, is everyone uh, agree with that. And the scientific uh, uh, findings are just part of this consensus. So, is it really that big, the problem? If environmental issues are a big problem, it's actually maybe the most complicated big problem you can have. It's complex, it's definitely a long-term issue that uh, appears in a long-term perspective, as well as its consequences. And, of course, there are economic interests that are strongly affected, usually, by that. Uh, then, what is the best solution on environmental issues? We may think of it, we may think we know it, but, first of all, we have to look for them. How can we do it? We need some kind of approach, at least, in the beginning. We can typologize them into three approaches. So as you can see, it's a reformative approach. So for example, you participate in a Green Party, you get elected to the parliament. It might be the radical approach, the protests. So you can participate in Fridays for Future or Extinction Rebellion. Or it could be creating parallel structures. Excuse me. I won't. So reformative. Uh, the reformative approach, it's something done on a high manager level, usually in politics. So regulation is a typical instrument of such an approach. If you regulate something, you are actually proposing and imposing some rules. And these rules are to be enforced by force in case they are not, then someone is not complying with them. This is the disadvantage of the reformative approach because once you're forcing someone to do something, uh, except of, let's say, ethical uh, aspect, also it, it's not so easy to find out if it's effective or not. So even if you, for example, in your individual case, find out it doesn't work, you still have to comply with that. Otherwise, you are under the risk of penalty, and your motivation is not to get the penalty. Then the quantifiable impact of uh, such instruments uh, is not certain very often, because uh, you can say, all right, there is some regulation, but how exactly this regulation affects the result? 
there will be many, many factors, and to measure it, it's not easy. It's uh, actually pretty hard. Um, radical approach can have very mass consequences in especially liberal democracies, as we can see, for example, Prague 7 district recently declared the state of climate emergency. So I would say the Fridays for Future have some impact. On the other hand, what kind of impact? Isn't it just the consequence of the pressure? Is it really based on some rational decisions? In uh, dictatorships, there is another issue because such a protest, such a radical approach is usually not very effective because you're being simply destroyed by the power. And of course, there's a uh, risk of manipulation. Uh, there is this kind of risk everywhere, but uh, especially uh, if you have mass protests, it's quite easy to uh, find a way how to put some ideas uh, into it and get the masses manipulated because there is some psychological aspect of, uh, of this approach. What is parallel approach? Um, it's the same with Parallel Polis. Uh, the idea was proposed by Václav Benda in his essay called Parallel Polis, Parallel Polis in Czech, uh, as he uh, reacted on the state of Charter 77, which was an organization fighting for human rights in the 70s in Czechoslovakia. And the core of this idea is you're not demanding solution, which is the approach of uh, radical radicals. Uh, you're not forcing it, which is the reformative approach. You simply create it. Of course, you're not creating the solution, the global one for everything right now, but you create it and you have a chance to test it, you have a chance to iterate and to find out if this approach or if this solution works in a smaller scale. And uh, please keep it in mind because uh, Michal and then will be talking about the uh, scaling and iteration and so on as one of the core principles of parallel approach. It's practical and independent solution. What does it mean independent? Independent solution means independent of power structures. Um, if you already attended Hackers Congress, you probably heard of ideas uh, like independence of, on, of state or ideas about the state power and its consequences. But let's summarize it. It's not only about state, it's about the power structure. So the examples uh, I put on the board, uh, this is, is not only the state, also corporations. So. Facebook is definitely power structure. And it could be also the community governed by some psychopath or someone with big influence who is able to impose the power instruments and to get his solution uh, towards others actually because like based on his power. What are the advantages of parallel, uh, parallel structures? First of all, maybe they are, they are identify the, the real issues. So for example, for us, if we have a problem with agriculture and the way how it's used, how it's operated, uh, um, we can't change the whole agriculture, but we have to, if we want to do something, we have to find a way how to, uh, let's say, change something. So if, for example, you don't know what is in your food, what you're eating, and you want to get it more transparent, then you could find a way how to grow your food more transparently. So for example, in hydroponic system, because you use a water and you use some kind of fertilizer, you will probably know what is inside, or at least you have much better chance than if you buy something at the shop because uh, the whole chain is first of all intransparent and it's also like very robust to get to know exactly what is it. Uh, voluntary approach as its advantage from ethical point of view as well as uh, if you do something voluntary, you 
also can stop doing it voluntarily and change your mind, change your, change your activity. And the mistakes are cheaper, because if you can change it more flexibly, then you probably not waste uh, so many sources, uh, so many resources uh, on your action if it's not effective and if it's uh, the dead end, actually. So application on big problems, uh, as I mentioned, it will be, uh, it will, uh, Michal will talk about it in bigger detail. However, the idea is you start small and local solution, then if it works, you can scale it up to big and global solution. Uh, also, if you would like to start the parallel project, the difference between the common startup and the parallel startup, let's say, or project, is that uh, you're working on some common benefit. Yeah, so this is the idea behind all together with the others. And uh, last but not least, it's parallel, not counter approach. What does it mean? Uh, it's natural that if you bring some good solution that works and you're able to scale it, it might probably affect uh, legislation, for example, or let's say reformative approaches, as well as the radical approaches. So this is also something what Václav Benda in his essay predicted as a humanization of existing structures. So it's not that you're going to destroy the existing structures or destroy the power structures, but because of you succeed with your solution, the existing structures can get humanized or can get more effective and they adjust to the better solution. That's the also part of the idea. So thank you and now if you don't think it's possible or you're still asking how can someone think of uh, using a small solution and scale up to big solution and change something from scratch, I would like to give a word to Michal, who is going to describe the principles and the specific way how we are doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Clicker. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for coming. <coughs> uh, it's my pleasure to, to tell you our story about Parallel Garden and to, to put some context about uh, the Radim, mm, Radim part of the presentation, about the theoretical things and to try to tell you some, some specific uh, stories and how, uh, how we did it, that, that we still, still continue in the project. Uh, how we build in parallel way from scratch, locally, but with global vision and ambition. Uh, when, I, when I was thinking to prepare this uh, presentation, uh, I came up with uh, four principles, uh, what we are doing, and uh, that we are trying to, to stay with our project uh, to be long term and not be hyped just about uh, the first interest of people in in first three months in such place like a parallel uh, parallel police parallel police which is uh, very common and the four <coughs> uh, specific principles the fusion is parallel police strategy loyal community lean approach and honest open source and i will tell you about the, the each of these and try to to connect it parallel police strategy parallel approach uh, Radim told you a lot about the, the, the parallel police and the concept of Václav Benda, so I will try to be quite fast in this part. But uh, I, uh, I would definitely recommend you to, to read the, the essay. It's, uh, eight, it's just uh, eight pages, and it's written by uh, Václav Benda. It's really important you know, to, to read it, you know, because it's, uh, then it makes sense you know, like, uh, what is really matter to be parallel. Uh, about our project, I would like to I, I would like to say that uh, we see parallel garden as a, as an application of the parallel principle in agriculture, and we try and we try to be inspiration to show that you can approach with uh, that you can uh, that you can use the parallel approach also in other sectors, you know, such as education, music, and journalism. This project would be some, something like parallel school, parallel sound, or parallel broadcasting. 
uh, we are very lucky that, that we have this platform of parallel police uh, concept. We have this building and, and we can gather the community and to, get, uh, to, to meet uh, very, very interesting people from, from different fields, you know, and, and <coughs> it's very important. And the second, second principle is loyal community. And uh, our story, you know, how we start to build the community, it, it was our, our main goal at the beginning. And we start, we start to, uh, pro with production of uh, Enviro meetups every, every <coughs> uh, two weeks. And we started last, last year, and, and the, the goal was to gather community together and, and speak with, uh, with uh, great professionals and meet people and speak about uh, the problem in Enviro and so on. This is the picture after, after our fourth Enviro meetup and you can see that uh, the, the Institute of Crypto Anarchy is already quite full. Now <coughs> we already produced something like 15 Enviro meetups and, and uh, regularly we have like 60 people here, you know, so, so it's quite a quite big community and we are lucky that, that uh, uh, the community is quite loyal to us and we can speak with them, you know, and, uh, uh, get some new uh, insights, you know, and from from different fields. Building the community, you know, like uh, this is the story, you know, like <coughs> it's not just about the producing Enviro meetups. You need to get the keys to the cafe, you know, because after the first two Enviro meetups, uh, the people who came here to to Parallel Police. Uh, after the Enviro meetup, you know, they were said from, from the, the baristas in cafe that, oh, come on, you should not be here, it's already, it's already closed, you know. And then it's not possible to gather community, you know, when you, when you don't have uh, a space to meet with people and communicate. So uh, we think with, with my colleagues, you know, and say, you know, how to make the place, you know, where, where you can stay with people and talk with them and, and, and have a, a lot of time to speak with them and find some new solutions, you know. So we, we take the, the keys and stay with people very often until, until two o'clock in the morning, you know, and, and then you have speak like for six hours or something like that. A lot of people from our communities is here today, so, so I'm very glad, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the picture. It's something like uh, uh, 30 to midnight, you know, and, and uh, very often we stayed until until midnight or 12 o'clock in the morning and it was very important to our project you know and we are we are still still in touch with, with our community and they help us a lot you know also with the, with the know-how with uh, with funding you know and so on a lot of things I, I was I was very in, in impressed you know uh, how how powerful it is when you are <coughs> in regular touch with, with with the people who are interested about your about your topics so I really recommend to try to do this and to be to be authentic and open the third the third principle is lean approach its methodology i would definitely recommend this book you know because it's methodics and you should be quite disciplined to follow the rules about the methodics uh, and not be very creative which is very common running clean that that, that, that was our ex inspiration it's like something like 200 pages and <coughs> the, the I would say two most in important uh, things, and I can see it ver very common also here in Paralympolis because it's it's uh, linked with uh, uh, crypto projects and startups and so on. That uh, you should be very careful, uh, developed wisely, fast, and with respect to all resources of your project. Uh, but it's not just about money; it's also about the people, about your time, and sometimes people are too fast, but sometimes they are think thinking too much, you know, so, so it's, it's some kind of, uh, yeah, it's better to, to follow the, the methodics and, and uh, but, but the, the more important things I would say that it's very often very uh, acceler ac accelerated, you know, that, that people in startups try to be very fast, expand and scale, you know, because it, it's hyped, you know, and you can see it in the movies and so on, but, but you should build a, a you should build a stable foundations of the project and we, we, we really spend a lot of time to speak about uh, uh, about our steps 
and what to do and not be so big, you know, and uh, uh, every, every second week in, in television or try to, to make a PR interviews and so on. And more to focus about the technology and try the first steps, you know, what the technology, technology will do. And uh, I, I can show you an on, on example in our project in Parallel Garden. It's like in iterations leading to the first rooftop greenhouse in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. That was our goal from the beginning. We, we, we wanted to build the first rooftop greenhouse on the top of uh, Parallel Nipolis because this, is, this building is the, the best you know, for, for such, such a project. I know it already fr from the past, you know, from my second project, the Kotel. So th this community and people are great, and you can be very, very open in your uh, in your visions. So that was that was our goal from the beginning. But uh, when you when you think ju just to to build the, the rooftop, uh, the, the the greenhouse r r rooftop, you you would start ju just with money, with funding, you know, with with, uh, with talks about money and uh, and venture capital. But we did it a different way, uh, probably the, the lean way. This is like one year ago, and we just uh, came to uh, one, let's say, hackers place, you know, and, and three people, and spent something like 20 hours to to build the first hydroponic system. It's still still there. It's in Bitcoin Caf Cafe. You, you can, uh, we can go there, you know, after after my talk and after after Jakub, and we we build the, this simple box. You know, it's it's nothing. Nothing special, you know, it's n n no magic box or something like that. We just spend something like 20 hours to together, meet each other and speak about our project. You know. That's the first iteration, worked well, very well and, I and impressed the community in Parallel Police, you know, because we put a, something like uh, something like a new design piece, you know, in, in Bitcoin coffee and it's uh, our uh, romantic is very strict about design in, in coffee. So, and like uh, in whole parallel police. So a lot of people were interested how we made it, you know, like that, that, that our hydroponic system can, can, can be in, in, in Bitcoin coffee. So we get some, some first interest and the first hydroponic systems uh, uh, was without uh, Internet of Things device. We didn't get any data. It was very simple, you know, with analog uh, that time, and uh, only only thing with uh, with computer was was the web camera, which was taking you know one picture in five minutes or something like that. But <coughs> it made some interest, and and we got uh, in cooperation with guys, you know, and you can see already the the IoT of de IoT device, Internet of Things. And uh, after one one month or two months of the project, uh, we we could get uh, we could get data fr from from hydroponic systems. So we decided to to build eight of these smaller boxes to to be able to iterate in in the technology what we need to uh, our our goal to to our rooftop green greenhouse, which is the IoT in automatization and LED lights. So we made eight of these, and already uh, it was crowdfunded from our closest friends, you know, and, and supporters from Paralympolis. So we were able to get some fundi funding. Uh, yeah, and th this is uh, this is the other iteration. It's already vertical hydroponic system, and we installed it not in Paralympolis, but in Bistro, very near from here in Letna, which is very. It's uh, one of the most hipster uh, place and bistro uh, at Letna, so it gets even more interest. But this vertical system is it's already scalable, you know. So so you can use some some kind of uh, some kind of this technology or vertical hydroponic already in in a in a rooftop greenhouse, you know. So we are already on our way, and. Uh, this vertical hydroponics we already uh, sold with with profit, you know. So so it's already already profitable project, like not not, not very important profit, but uh <coughs> but we are able to build it and and put it I into the the rooftop greenhouse, and this is the vision. And the the last thing is honest open source. I would just want to say that that we open all of our know-how on on GitHub. Uh, you can build your own hydroponic systems. You can also uh, uh, buy or write to, to our friends to get the hardware and, and download uh, all of the software or firmware written for, for our projects. You can download it and build it. 
but for a lot of people in our community, uh, GitHub, uh, a lot of people never heard about GitHub, you know, so, so you can, you should be more careful how you communicate with the people. So we, we connected communication uh, on GitHub, Facebook, YouTube, uh, sometimes on Instagram, and we, we are doing every, every uh, second week uh, a YouTube streaming about the new iterations in, in our project. And so this is the, the, the regular contact with, uh, with our supporters. And we are on our way how to build the rooftop greenhouse. And maybe in in next, uh, on next Hackers, Hackers Congress, uh, we will be able to, to guide you there and, and show you our new technology. Yeah, this is our, <laughs> it's our friend, you know, from, from the community. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is our challenge. You can try our <coughs> our uh, open source technology, and I would like to uh, to ask you to build uh, one of first hydroponics uh, on your own and and share your experience with us. And now I will uh, give uh, I will give uh, give the space for for Jakub, and he will he will tell you more and and give you some visual excursion about our projects. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Uh, I will speak mostly to the technological aspects of the project. So this is the first hydroponic box we built in the Bitcoin Coffee. Uh, now, how it works. Basically, the box serves as the reservoir for the water with the nutrition. There is a pump and the pump is pumping the solution to the irrigation system. And through these, uh, through these tubes and needles, uh, the plants are watered by the drip uh, irrigation. Then the excess water gets collected back in the box again and circulates inside. So we know exactly what is inside the system, what is the income for the plant to grow. Uh, we are saving water, about 97% uh, about, uh, of water consumption in, um, in uh, comparison to the, to the growing in the soil is saved. And uh, basically, we can grow anywhere we want, uh, independently on the soil, on the uh, let's say on the soil ownership, and uh, also independent, independently on the distribution uh, chains because we can grow anywhere. So, uh, so that's one of the best advantages of the hydroponic systems. Uh, this is the first device uh, we applied to the to the. Uh, hydroponic system in the Bitcoin coffee. This one, uh, this IoT device serves just for the data uh, monitoring. It doesn't control anything, but we are already collecting data about temperature, light intensity, or moisture of the substrate. Uh, the second one is this experimental box. Uh, uh, as, you, as you can, as you will see, we have one of them installed in the in the La Fabrica, um, and uh, you will see that it already looks a bit different because we made some adjustments on it. We had issues with the lights that they were uh, well not strong enough, so we did some changes. But uh, what's the biggest achievement is that now uh, the, uh, the system is monitored by the device, but also controlled. The device is controlling um, uh, the pump and also the lights, not only in the regime on and off, but also it can control uh, exactly the, the power of the lights, the electricity consumption and so on. This is the soil sensor. This is the webcam for the, for the picture collect collecting. And uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is the latest design, this vertical one. This one is uh, a little bit different because the plant is growing in the in the basket in the channel with a stable water level and the substrate sucks the water up and the roots are rooting in the water there is only a, a small rock wool cube or it could be some uh, paper pot or jiffy pot and uh, and the the plant gets any everything that needs from the water solution as you can see the water is running uh, through the pipe. Under the system there is the reservoir, pumps the water up and it goes back. So it's 
again pretty simple and uh, this is yeah this is the idea something where we would like to get uh, the automated greenhouse or whatever but uh, yeah we are working a lot on the automation not that much in the way to save the manpower but to control the resources as wisely as possible uh, for example we are now ready to start programming uh, that the device will measure the light income from the outside and will control in real time the output of the light. So we will we will we will work precisely with the energy consumption, and uh, and so on. So that's the way of automation we are trying to bring. Uh, if you are interested in the technologies, we are mostly communicating with the public through the Facebook, where you can also find the link to the GitHub and these, because it's just uh, difficult to bring the people from, let's say, my profession or different professions to the GitHub. They don't know this platform. So uh, yeah, that's our main communication channel. Um, about the IoT device, well, in our way, it's a small computer or series of computers that communicate outside or between themselves uh, through the internet. Uh, they serve to measure the data, store the data, and control the key elements in real time. Uh, we are so far measuring light intensity, substrate moisture, and temperature. Uh, now we are controlling the light and irrigation system uh, by operating the pump or solenoid valve. Uh, and later we will probably also take a look at the heat. Uh, why? Because uh, we would like to develop uh, cost-wisely accessible um, automation technologies that are effectively working with the resources. Uh, this is our last installation of the IoT device. Well, one of our friends was building this irrigation system on his field and we managed to connect the IoT device to the system. Uh, so the system is series production, nothing special, we just add, added one cable there to be able to uh, connect the device. And uh, here, there is the soil sensor. Uh, then it sends data to the to the uh, to the uh, ESP, and uh, then it controls the valve. Uh, this is how the data we are collecting look like from the soil, and uh, we have a series of water meters to be able to calculate if we are saving the water. Basically, our idea is to operate the drip irrigation precisely on uh, depending on the soil moisture in real time again. And uh, the farm bot is American open source project. We decided to build it, uh, well, for a few reasons. First, uh, there, was a, there was a supporter who we met uh, on our Enviro meetups and he offered us to bring this uh, thing because he bought it and you know, he felt like it will be out of his capacity to build it and somehow make it work. So we, we took it over. We started programming it. It's also open source, so it gives us a lot of it gives us a lot of feedback about how open source project might look like and um, how to work with it. Uh, this farmbot is basically uh, something like three D printer CNC machine that uh, operates on the flower bed. Uh, it has uh, tools that it can exchange and do some operations like irrigation, weeding. Uh, it can measure the soil moisture and it moves and, and does this important work for uh, instead of people. So yeah, for us, it's mostly about the research. And this is the calibration of weeds. There is a camera installed inside. Uh, each plant we want to grow has its coordinates and the camera learns to recognize green and once it sees anything green away from the coordinates of the culture plant, it, it destroys it because it evaluates it as a weed. This is how the farming uh, software looks like. That It's quite interesting that even you basically anyone can basically anyone can can do it it's like special programming language which is also open source so so uh, so it's possible to learn how to do it this is how the wheat recogni recognition looks like 
this is the farm we're watering, and this is the this is the tools we are. It's using there is the moisture meter, seeding needle, uh, irrigation head, and so on. So uh, that's it from uh, from my side. Uh, we would like to continue with a short tour through our installations because they're basically all nearby around. It's within the the area, and uh, also we have we have few. Uh, samples of the lettuce we've grown in the hydroponics system, so uh, feel free to taste and eat it all. Thank you. But thank you. But before before you go, take uh, the tour and uh, taste how the community life of Enver Meetups look like. Uh, we'd like to pass you a word, and uh, if you have any questions, please raise them. We have like five minutes, so maybe two, three questions, depending how brief you are. So, is there some question? Would, you, would anyone like to ask? Do you have plans to weaponize the farm boat with the laser for the weeding part? And if so, what would be the power? Guys, did you get the question? Oh, please repeat. Uh, do you plan to develop a new module for the farm bot, for the weeding, like equipped with the laser head, and like, pew, zip it? <laughs> yeah, no, not really, maybe laser, but uh, I guess we don't really know how, how powerful it should be, and so far, we don't know how to implement it to the system. Someone wants to answer as well. Okay, so another question. Out oh, there. Okay. Uh, first, I want to congratulate you for the project. I think it's amazing. Um, I would like to ask you if you consider uh, aquaphonica, which is basically creating a closed ecosystem where the fishes uh, feed from the plants that you have, and then you can have both uh, kind of food. Yeah, actually, we actually we we have some uh, we we know about some other projects which are uh, focused on aquaponics. Uh, so far, we are not working with aquaponics for a few reasons. One is that it demands like another extra know-how, quite a lot of uh, energy to spend on it. Uh, the second is that so far we have not seen any project that would not have like problems with the fish. Sometimes they die, sometimes they get disease. It must get solved somehow. And uh, it can also affect the production. Also, also the nutrition water from the fish needs uh, additives ag again to, to grow the plants. So, so far we are working with the system that we can understand more easily and faster we are focused on using uh, like uh, biological uh, fertilizers and so on. And uh, like maybe the next step will be aquaponics. But also, if you're running aquaponics system, you also need to find basically the economical, sustainable model with the fish, not only with the lettuce or the vegetables. It's another whole process to establish. So. Hopefully yes. Hopefully we will get there, but so far, so far we're not there yet. Uh, but regards fishes, we are definitely interested about uh, using heat from from mining or uh, even from from uh, some kind of uh, power plants. You know, to to use it to for for uh, some kind of fishes. You know. Uh, can work uh, together, and so so we are definitely interested about this co combination. Uh, is there any other urgent question? If not, uh, those who are interested, you can join guys. Otherwise, thank you for inspiring presentation and good luck with your other activities. Yeah.